Happy birthday, Echo. Happy birthday, brother. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for playing that, Mal. Welcome back. Yep. Thanks, Mal. We are back. I'm going to down the hatch with this. This is some scotch. What are you drinking there, Echo? I can't see it because of fucking Apple products. It's a local uh, a local find, uh, just affectionately named Cockwater. Cockwater. What a fitting drink for the birthday of Marines. Right? Yeah. And I know that I, I can already see the comments being written about, ha <laughs> Marines eat cock. <laughs> yeah. It's we in drink, there. It's, it's, we drink it's cock water on our birthday. So what? Yeah. I got some black mm -hmm. label scotch here, so it keeps it balanced, you know, between us yeah. two. So I'm just going to down this real quick. Okay. Ah. <sighs> It's nine in the morning here, my time. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of that, Mal. You might want to get the bleep button ready for it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, a lot of that. I'm ready. What's the bleep button? What are we bleeping out? My burps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, that was to my good friend, Thane Arbon. May he rest in peace. Oh, yeah. For Thane, dude. For Thane. Um, but happy birthday, Marines, everywhere. Uh, happy fucking birthday to you, Echo. And Thanks, buddy. welcome back, bro. Oh, welcome back to us. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Um, this is really annoying that I can't see what's going on. So I don't care if we have a little bit of audio. Kick back. I'm doing this. Coming back in, baby. But um, you're Tim Cook. Fuck yourself. Yeah. Exactly, dude. Um, actually, I just selected the no audio option. I guess you have to do it when you join. Uh, try and say something. Hey, what's up? My name is Echo, and I'm here with my best bud, Daft, and we're going to talk FPS tactics. That's I'm right. stuck in the nail. That's right, gentlemen. All of you salty privateers that have been out there waiting and waiting and waiting for another episode of Stuck in the Nail. When's it going to happen? Where's Daft? Where's Echo? Well, we're right here now. Okay? We're back. Echo left for the store, and he got the milk. He came back. <laughs> no milk was got. But I yeah, will you tell forgot, you that. Actually, you forgot the milk. But yeah. Um, yeah, we're super glad to have Echo back. The privateers <clears throat> have been chugging um, like, like we're chugging uh, cock water over here, so. Uh, we've been plugging along, and then Echo was doing life, getting better at life, healing some shit, like doing doing spiritual journeys, climbing Mount Everest and Dalai Lamas and stuff, right? I mean, I wasn't like wearing Sherpa clothes or anything. I was still just a fat white man with tits, but you know, you get the gist. <laughs> yeah, sometimes every every man has his journey, right? Mm -hmm. Depending. So that's awesome, dude. But uh, yeah, we Star Citizen is in a fucking fantastic place to grow or to, to play right now would you agree you've come back we've been playing we've been getting in the mix what's your thoughts yeah it's wild it's uh my uh my hats off to cig man like they're killing it right now they're, they're doing well squadron 42 is on the precipice of being finished mm -hmm. and you're starting to see the the shift of those developers come back into the pu and it's uh it's definitely visible it is. It, you can feel it too, just in the frame rates. You can feel it in the smooth, uh, uh, like just the movement of, of things in the verse, like a ship flying overhead or a teammate moving next to you through a structure or just in a patrol, whatever we're doing. You're seeing your buddies and they're like, they're not just like skipping around and desyncing. Well, of course, some of the times it still happens. You get a shitty It's still server. an alpha. The, yeah. the temper, the expectations, mm -hmm. it's not done. Not you done. can clearly tell it's not done. But yeah. there's 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 pinpoints of, of, like, really cool stuff, like, you know, Pyro, the EPTU, even the PU at times is like, a fucking a butter. A and butter. It's nice. I can't believe it's not butter, and it's actually yeah. Star Citizen. Yeah. It's... Right. <laughs> no, it's been really smooth. 
uh, for the most part, I'm like a higher percentage, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'd get some smooth times and we'd be like, that's cool. That's awesome. And then, then it would go away for a long time, but now it's here and it's very smooth. So majority of my play sessions have been very smooth. Desync is minimal. So I know where my teammates are. I, I don't even give a shit about desync when I'm facing NPCs or even players. I would much rather know where my teammates are. I think that's, that's priority. And like your individual action set, you're like, where are my team? Because like, like you were saying last night, it was really hard. We were just doing Orison platforms, and it was really hard to not to know where each other was. And so close quarters were breaching in out of elevators and doing all sorts of shit. And like people were crossing muzzles, and just desync was lit was everything, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, that's so the, it's still there. It still sucks for all you haters out there. Yeah, it still it still sucks. And then also, it's still. Uh, that's like the most crucial thing to the way we play the game is like desynchronization. Mm. If it's going to kill, if, if you're rolling with a team like we do where we actually implement, uh, you know, kind of real world tactics, but we, we paste them into Star Citizen when applicable. And like any type of FPS game, if you're moving, shooting and moving and communicating with a team, it's really, really important that you know where that team is. And so that's that's the hardest part for me. It's desync. It's like, how how do we really... How do we be a team if I can't even see where my guys are? You know, how how do we well, be a team at all? Desync is is a pretty interesting concept, right? Like it sucks when you're playing a video game for sure, but desync exists in real life. Like you don't, you can't. It's hard for you to know where your dudes are at, at all times. So that's why we have all those IFF and mm -hmm. you know chain features and buddy battle buddies and you know communication, so that we can. Uh, get an idea where everybody is without having to see them, right? Yeah, without a little magic icon over their head. Right. <clears throat> That's a good point, man. There is there is desynchronization, but there's also one of our favorite acronyms. I'm about to say it. I'm about to say it. We have SOPs uh, for that. <laughs> you know, there's SOPs. I got right? a little chub there. Yeah, you know. Not going to lie. SOPs, man. Um, standard operating yeah. procedures for the layman. That's why we have an SOP of like if you're in a wedge formation or if you're in this certain structure or whatever, like you kind of know if I'm watching this door and I, even though I don't see the privateer behind me, like I know he's going to watch the back door, right? Or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that's- You had a great experience yeah. with that recently Ooh. within the MVP, didn't you? Do, did I? Yeah, Which you one? did, didn't you? Which one are you talking about? There's been like six, so- I need or, to uh, So with Riddick in the, in the 890. <laughs> Right? Yeah, that would, like I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. I just turned French for a second. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me drink some more. Uh, yeah, dude, yeah. Riddick is one of our pilots. Okay, so this was awesome. Uh, our latest video out there. Shout out to the USC uh, group. They they're cool, but you know we're we're out for our own content, and we saw an opportunity. So say what thou willst. Say thou, thou, what thou wilt, and I will slap thee with a glove, and we shall parlay and uh, duel. Um, but they, they were an awesome group of guys uh, that, from what we see. I think we, we rubbed them wrong, which is understandable. So those of you that are in the USC, cool. And uh, we've seen some salt in the comments a little bit, but some good points were made too. So we wanted to kind of actually talk about this. Maybe this is a good segue. So in the 890 jump, if you go watch that, that video, uh, we had some organic gameplay happen, and we proof of concept like a bunch of shit. So we gained a fuck ton from that little engagement. And we'll get into that in a second. <clears throat> but Riddick is one of our drop or transport pilots. So he's normally just on the stick, getting us in the hot spots, getting us out of hot spots. And But this time he got thrown in the mix because every privateer is capable on the ground first, <clears throat> capable in a privateer team of, of you know, six and uh, killing and thrilling. And he just, he hadn't been with the ground team for a long time, but he's in our comms, he's listening to us, he's <clears throat> part of the ground team, just an extension of a transport pilot. So he kind of got thrown into the mix just as a rifleman. And uh, there's this element, this part of the 890 clip you'll see on that video. We'll, we'll probably link it or comment it in, the, in this video. Um, but yeah, go check that out. It's the latest Branders video. I think it's called Shipboarding Action or something. Uh, it's pretty cool. And there's as the combat starts, we, we get up to the foyer area of the 890 jump. 
and I give some instruction to start breaching the staircase. And as you know, Echo, and some of you that are aware, like staircases are fucking death traps, right? Like doorways, windows, staircases, uh, you know, intersections and hallways. Like those are just the most dangerous parts of any type of internal fight, right? <clears throat> yeah, they uh-huh. make you the most vulnerable. Yeah. And especially in that foyer, it's so open. Anybody on the top railings could just rain down. And so uh, he was point man. And I said, hey, hook the staircase. Like, like you got a danger area to your front. And you can see him. He holds for a second, maybe a little hesitation, making sure that danger area is covered. But then he hooks the staircase. And it's like such a bad, it's like such a not natural thing to do as a gamer. He knew there was a guy in that doorway. And he instinctively turned, or like instinctively wanted to hold on that on that doorway. But he kept moving, and you can see the hesitation, and then he breaks away and just peels up the staircase. Because I was right on his back and just came around the corner, and this, you know, doing one of these fucking Chris Robert memes, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I came around the, the just perfectly, and, and then the guy reappeared in the doorway, and I got to smoke him, which was, uh, you know, wonderful. And uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the Star Citizen gods were smiled upon me for that. <laughs> Anytime you can get a, another player lined up in your sights, it's just a good day. So Riddick, he kind of suppressed the doorway and then hooked it. Just completely being the one man, you got to leave that danger area to go cover another. And I, I don't even like calling it a danger area, but what else are you going to call it? You know, it's like that doorway, whatever. There's a threat. He left with the threat, is. and then he turned. And that's such a – it's so hard for gamers to do that. They, they What did you call it last night? Um, target. Fixation. Target fixation. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's a gamer thing, man. You know, shots are fired over here and everybody turns like a little kid's soccer game. Like the ball goes over here and they're like, ooh. ooh, ooh. So anyway, Riddick did a great job and he left Hats that off threat. off to that guy. He passed the threat off to me, right? Yeah. And, and he's our, one of our pilots. And so if that's his basic understanding of that, uh, it just speaks volumes to where the privateers are now. And um, Well, and I think it's important yeah. to highlight a few things there, right? Like, as gamers, we like to be the heroes in our own minds, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think anybody is going to deny that. And even if they do, like, fuck you. you. You think you're the hero. You are Master Chief in your own mind, right? Like, <laughs> But to be able to play in a team, you have to be able to make those assists and make those passes. And, like, again, just that's a huge, huge overcoming of, like, a really bad habit all of us have in gaming. And to just, to, like... Ex- exhibit that in a game that kind of mentality is fucking cool man this is fucking cool it is dude <clears throat> and that's i think that's what we set out to do echo and i when we created branders privateers was to teach um teach the actual true principles and mentality of team tactics right and and, mm-hmm. and mainly infantry tactics right <clears throat> and so that's why here at stuck yeah. in the nail this is the only podcast dedicated to uh FPS action in, in the verse. Um, that's our thing. First person shooter. We'll, we'll talk about transport and insertion methods and ships and stuff. Um, and as the privateers grow too, we might even need to talk about fighter piloting stuff on occasion. I mean, like one out of 30 episodes, maybe. But that is still a viable thing to enable ground tactics is to have good air cover. And um, some of our guys are building out some air SOPs with that exact mentality. How do we support the game on the ground? How do we support the team on the ground, the team in EVA, the team on the 890 jump, the team on SPK, the team on any type of ground, right? Because <laughs> if there's a gravity grid, it's ground. If there's FPS action, even in EVA, that's still ground, like in our mind. That's still the priority. Ground-esque. Ground-esque, yeah. Because the reality is, uh, in, in real life, <clears throat> you know, we had massive armies of swordsmen and pikemen and you know all throughout history and then cavalry came in and mounted cavalry on horseback and like every every type of addition to warfare was to enable ground <laughs> i almost said gameplay but to enable the ground forces right why do you have yeah cavalry? it's all supportive yeah cavalry are way more expensive and require way more care than just the pikemen right but the pikeman is still doing the brunt of the work, right? He's out there, you know, doing all that. So the cavalry supports that. That's why cavalry exists. That's why artillery exists. That's why, 
you know, cannons and Gatling guns in the Civil War were created, you know, and uh, betterments to weapons and technology all support the actions of the soldier on the ground. Right. And that's why we have an Apache helicopter. So it was like there was this order of operations and the Star Citizen, they did it completely backwards. We don't really have any context to like how warfare is fought in the PU. We don't. Because we didn't start with infantry and then scale it up to an Apache, to an F-22. Like, <laughs> we just... Which, to be fair, yeah. I think the original scope of Star Citizen was meant to be space fairing. And then it just, like, oh, I got all this money. Well, let's expand it. Let's make the fidelity. Let's add the feet on the ground, right? Like, so, to their... A little bit in CIG's defense, I don't think they had the foresight to see that yeah. initially. Yeah. But they're here now, right? And that's where... Uh, us two dipshits come in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think there's some missing combat context, and uh, that's just the way it is. It's that's a really good point. We we shouldn't be too harsh on the devs, especially since they're delivering right now. So uh, right, they're on time. In, in doing, waves, doing waves. So yeah, nice job. But yeah, there is missing context because we started. We have an A two bomber before we have like artillery, and before we have even a means to use a compass on the ground. And like, I cannot, he, my character can't receive nourishment unless he's in, uh, you know, an air pressurized environment. I can't even, like, we, we don't even have any infantry tools, but we have tanks and we have an A2 bomber and we have a stealth bomber <laughs> and we have F-22. We don't really have anything for it to bomb. Yeah, like, what, what's that a bomb? Yeah, like a bunker maybe. I mean, uh, jump town. Jump town. Right. Like, but even then, like if you're in the structure, you survive, so they can't just yeah. wipe, jump town. But then, we learned from an exploit, uh, some griefer net guys. Um, hats off to them. Like, we we don't play the same way you play, but if that's gameplay for you, and if you guys are organized in preparation and you take the time to do that, you know, my hats off to you. Let's that's the way to play the game, but they, somebody has got to communicate that there are people there communicate, organize a, a bomber. The dude's got to grab a bomber. He's got to get the vectoring. Correct. He's got to get the location. Correct. He's yeah. got to fly correctly. He's, you know yeah. what I mean? So there's a ton of fucking coordination and planning they and do. execution involved in all of that. Yeah. Like uh grief and some other PVP orgs that get a lot of shit. They, they, they're not, they're not seen for what they do. Like when you get a long time backer, eight years, plus six years five years whatever the long time backer of star citizen they've explored every avenue the game has to offer and uh they take pleasure in like taking gameplay away from people i don't necessarily agree with that but they like to grief or what they would call grief or, or farm the salt uh that's like viable gameplay to me uh it bugs me i'm not like let's go do that too but they like i can see where they come from Right. I can, I can. Uh, there are definitely yeah. people in like real people in the world that just want to watch the world burn. Like, <laughs> the, uh, like true. those people exist. I've, I've experienced them firsthand, you know, like they have yeah. zero intention other than just making your day the shittiest day it can be. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really like low frequency vibes. Like you're just resonating as a human at lower frequency, but the, <laughs> you know, yeah i mean the yeah. psychology on it I'm, it's lost yeah. on me but whatever <laughs> whatever it is but yeah that's viable so we we were holding sbk one time and you know we had six or seven privateers in there with like full five crime stats and we thought we were good we thought we thought sbk was a hard point but we remembered as it was happening we're like oh yeah an a2 bomb only needs to be dropped into gravity there's no arming distance. There's no max or min altitude that it arms at. Mm. So a guy hovered an A2 over a, a gravity grid over one of the SPK pads and just dropped an A2 bomb, sacrificing himself and uh, essentially killing the gameplay of like 40 to 60 people on the server. The whole server was coming to third, fourth, fifth party us uh, with a couple other orgs that we know. So we kind of planned this. We're like, hey, privateers we're gonna go get his max crime stat and we're gonna hold sbk and it was awesome and then right when it was about to kick off like pvp was just starting outside of of uh of security post korea those guys bombed it so you know this brings us to another point is just operational security why why hmm. was grief Fernet even in our server right why <laughs> if that's a viable tactic why didn't i know about it more I should have I should have known that. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if that's a, a, an avenue that a gamer could take, they're going to take it, right? A gamer is going to take path of least resistance every time, right? Target fixation kind of mindset. Um, and, it, and it works. It gets them the W half the time. So, yeah. Uh, remind me what we were chatting about earlier before we I brought up grief or not. I have no idea. I'm just excited to be on camera with you. <laughs> Can I just, <laughs> we just appreciate, um, oh, it was the U.S. Stuck in the nail po yeah. podcast episode. It's going to be all over the place. Yeah. It's, we're, we're, it's the Marine Corps birthday, dude. We're so, we're happy. We got so much emotion, dude. I was like tearing up this morning, just going to get coffee. I was oh, yeah, like, just thinking about the bros. You know what I mean? And that what's yeah. cool is I think we've created a, a spot for more bros to exist. Uh, Marine Corps or not, we've created Branders Privateers, and Star Citizen is just delivering right now, and and everybody's on. Like um, that's got to be a trip for you though, because you took a hiatus dealing with some life stuff, and being a mm -hmm. founder of this group, coming back, what, what was that like? <clears throat> it was uh, muy interesante, and again, I know that's not <laughs> Spanish, but it is what it is. Um, no, it was interesting, man. Like I could feel myself. I I just recently found this term watching catching up on Star Citizen stuff. Hopium. I was doing hopium ah. off of bartender virtual bartenders fucking faces in Star Citizen before I left. Like I was just like my head was in the clouds. I wasn't uh, effective effective with my decision making and all this other stuff and like if you're gonna build a community like that is not a good way to lead at all like and i and i think it bites everybody at some point um i'm not saying like i'm some prolific dude that i'm like i saw it and i'm i wore the sherpa hat for fucking a year and now i'm back to drop you know what i mean like it, it yeah. is everybody kind of deals with it in their own way i had other personal stuff going on like coming to terms with a bunch of other personal shit in my life. So that was nice to just take a step back and like, you know, take a breather, find some, find some therapy in life. Uh, I found hockey, ice hockey, which I think, you know, most people saw at the end of the last episode, like I was getting into it. I'm yeah. into it now. And it's fucking great, man. I, I went and learned from people that have been playing this game longer than me. Um, I learned not only just like hockey skills, but like team skills, right? Or, or, uh, and, and it was able to make associations for my time in the military to those team, like some of those hockey skills. And I just found that hockey as a fat white man with tits, uh, can do, and it sort of simulates some of the things that I, that I've experienced in combat, which is really, really cool and very, very difficult to find um but uh yeah man that the game of hockey and everything that surrounds it mentors and experience and and uh, having a passion to like get better at something again and and like physical exercise and exercising mental decision making and split second you know intervals and um all of that has like re-humbled me uh in a way that i don't think was possible before before finding that at least specifically for me i'm not saying like go play hockey you know um but for me that's what it was mm -hmm. and so with St uh star citizen or sitcom this year the videos just started like youtube just knew where my brain is it's always listening right um yeah. started showing all that stuff and i was like holy shit dude they're making waves right yeah and catching up on that and then catching up on BP and what's been going on at BP for a year. It's just been, it's great, dude. I'm back. It feels good to be back and yeah, uh, chilling with the boys. And um, man, I've been like running platform missions on Orson and just having a fucking blast. And pyro has been fun. The, the pre tech preview to pyro, which I think we have a video or two coming out so we do for that soon. Yeah. Um, and just like, like leaving and then coming back and seeing like all of it working. Yeah. It's just cool. You know, it, it really is, man. I, I can't be more happy with star citizen and the timing of your return. Um, we we're you and I are passionate people. And so mm, very we, much. we had to express some emotions cause there was, 
we put a lot into this community. So to give you guys some more context, those watching, if you're a BP member, or if you've just kind of been watching from afar, or you're thinking about joining us to play some Star Citizen, number one, we want to play Star Citizen first, right? And then number two, come on in, and we'll, we'll teach you what we know. But uh, you, Echo and I, we started this group, and we built these like this foundation, this uh, this structure that was impervious to uh, you know isolating decisions with one person, and impervious. It had checks and balances, right? And my hats off to Echo coming back and following the things he wrote and reinserting himself back into his own community at the lowest possible role. We don't really do ranks, right? Because we, we're not a milsim. We don't think that's a good thing to chase. But he's going through, and it's actually a great tool for us as staff. Now we have Echo, the founder, going through every single role, experiencing the changes we've made while he was gone to give us feedback on it. It's fucking genius, dude. So my, my hat's off to you to come back and not have this big power play. A little hockey term for you. Not have this yeah. crazy power play. So, you know, of course, us being bros and being family, like we have our little disputes. We had we had that out. We had some words, but <laughs> like we're just at the end of the day. There's a lot of shit that need to get it out for that. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. we had a lot I mean, we, to we fill did. each other in on, dude. Like you grew as a person. Mm -hmm. I've grown as a person. Like I do this company full time now. This is my me and my wife's company. This is Blue Form Media. They're sponsoring or producing this podcast episode like they were originally, but like, uh, our, we have like five employees it's now. A fish. We got nine podcasts under our belt. So this is number ten. Now that we're br bringing stuck in the nail back, and this is like complete hobby project for us. But my wife too, Mallory, on the controls. Uh, tip of the hat to her. She knows this is a passion for me and Echo. She knows mm. every single privateer by their gamer tag and some of them by their real names because they've helped us build this infrastructure on network and network attached storage and all this shit like. Dude, the privateers, this what a great community. We built a community. We did, dude. And proof and of then, concept. And then we play Star Citizen in that community. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a community first. It's a Star Citizen org second. Um, but we when it comes to Star Citizen, we focus on playing the game rather than yeah, speculating and uh, uh, giving each Announcing other commodores and, and titles and, and, and promoting and generals and ministries. For, for those and, of you who are aware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Departments of defense and yeah. all this other stuff. Yeah. The Minister of Magic or whatever the fuck. I, have we, like, have we killed that horse? Is that horse dead? I, I don't know. Which horse? I, I guess not because, like, milsims keep popping up, I suppose. But we had a really good conversation the other day about milsim. Some of the new guys in MVP were like, well, it seems milsimmy. And I was like, <laughs> no. no. And here's why. Right? Like. Yeah. You know, I think going into it and yeah, I mean, we have to have structure, right? This is always the yeah. fine line. We have to have structure. We have name have... any entity on planet Earth, <laughs> nefarious right. or not, that doesn't have some kind of structure and organization. Yeah. Uh, you'd be hard pressed. Utopia can't exist. It does. It's you can't, you can't do it. Like you, it's not free for all where everyone just fucking runs around naked and like, you know, takes a sip of this guy's Coke and, yeah. fucking fucks that guy's wife and like it just doesn't happen like it's just <laughs> anarchy like that can't exist you know yeah and it can exist but it's not it's not viable. it's not gonna be yeah it's not viable it doesn't progress society or anything i see your yeah. point totally so yeah like there, there's a fine line between like structure and then like milsim you know yeah um but once you once you zoom in on it you're like oh this is actually a pretty wide ravine it's not a fine mm -hmm. line so it appears like a fine line then you zoom in you're like okay no. So, uh, yeah, we don't have commandants and pomp and circumstance kind of ranks. We don't build in community ladders for people to climb. You know, we don't we don't do that. Um, it's all gameplay oriented and you have a role. And if you fill that knowledge role, based, knowledge based. Yeah. The role that you have and carry within Branders Privateers is meant to showcase your knowledge of how we operate and your commitment to the community. That's it. There's That's no, it. there's no ladder. So if you're not a certain role and you're in BP and you're like, I'm not this role yet, just play with us more, <laughs> learn more, take more responsibilities, take one for the team, you know, go out and support team gameplay. Like shout out to some of our specialists. They're not really special. They just enable more gameplay for us by doing jobs that 
probably aren't the most glamorous, right? Like the other day, if you go watch our latest video, the shipboarding action, we had Chankov, who's probably one of our most talented Star Citizen players. Like in a PvP pinch, tactics or no, I would want Chankov right next to me. I'd be like, oh, 100%. I'm following this guy. And where did he position himself? Just in an Eclipse bomber, 300, 400 meters away, just watching, just feeding information, supporting the team. Um, and he got his payoff. Yeah, he he downed two player controlled Carex and an eight nine or not an eight ninety, but two player controlled Carex and a player controlled Redeemer with that with his torps, and that was his little hit of dopamine at the end of the day. But I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into that because I think we had some momentous things happen <clears throat> as an org, like it's been happening just one after the other, just with the organic PvP we've been experiencing. Um, the game just blowing up with a lot more progress. Echo coming back. Echo getting in the mix in Pyro. I dare say it. I think the day of organized PvP, where you go set up your your base and we go set up our base and then we fight and here are the rules. I think that's dying. I think that's almost gone. There, there might still be a place and a use for it, but I think it's kind of by the wayside. What do you think? Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all, right? Like, we we used to spend hours mm -hmm. communicating with the works and being like, okay, what yeah. is the bounds and all emphasis this stuff. on the people ah. wanted to take Battlefield and stick it into the universe of Star Citizen, and you just can't fucking do that, man. Like, yeah, it, it, the amount of work you can, it takes. I guess, yeah. right? Like, it's absolutely possible for you to go. Mm -hmm. This is our boundaries, and you don't cross them. But like, then a griefer net comes in and blows your whole shit up, and you're like, yeah. "Well, all that three hours of planning is gone now, right?" Like that shit sucks. Yeah. And I think planning is gameplay for commandants and fucking admiral ministries, overlords and uh, you know, department of naval exploitation and <laughs> revivals and stuff. And that's great. And like, if you want to. If you want to, excuse me, you want to make that high level planning, go for it. But like to drag the boys into that kind of mess, like, holy shit. I've been on both ends of that spectrum where like I'm sitting in calls with people like, OK, well, um, in 3.15, the grenade launcher has um, this exploit. So we're going to admit that. Do you guys want it's like a fucking esports thing. Like, that's just not you putting all these constraints on things is just just highly inefficient and it really for the people for the for the orgs that do that kind of stuff i feel like it really builds a mindset and a habit of like this is how we want gameplay but that's not necessarily how it's going to come out and if you're not a willing to adapt and like you know mold to whatever cig is throwing in current patches then your org will eventually die, right? Like because mm -hmm. that gameplay won't present itself. Your your everything you've done in that org to, pre to prepare for that type of gameplay will be for nothing. Yeah. And then eventually people would be like, well, this just isn't fun anymore, right? Like I want to move on. I don't care if I'm a sergeant or a lieutenant commander or admiral or whatever. Like I'm not getting the gameplay out of it that I want. And then everybody's in the back room just fucking snorting hopium across you know <laughs> virtual butt cracks and stuff and it's like I, yeah i so me personally i don't i don't want any part of that kind of stuff just because yeah. the planning isn't or like the the setup isn't worth the squeeze you get four or five hours of setup for what 20 minutes of gameplay yeah right if if the and, game even lets you do it right or yeah, right if you know contingent of, on other griefers not coming in or third parties coming in and jacking it up yeah, man, yep. that's that's a great, great way to frame it. It's like the payoff back in the day, like that was the only payoff, right? Like if you wanted really high coordinated PvP, you had to coordinate with other orgs and set it up. But then we, mm -hmm. you know, you and I did that, and a lot of our privateers have done that, and we're like, that was cool. We had some good payoffs, some great gaming moments, sure. but the cost to get there was so high, so we all got burnt out. Right. We got burnt right. out from dealing with the orgs that want to make rules because, you know, the Pathfinders, I'm not afraid to call them out. They're a great group of guys. They do awesome RP, awesome Milsim stuff. 
I think if there's anyone doing Milsim it, right, it's them. If you want the Milsim, mm. we don't, but we did a whole bunch of, we did two ops with them and we realized they kind of make rules and they make these scenarios to enable gameplay for their members, which in itself is not a bad idea. But what mm, that does is, is they do things just to do shit. Oh, let's build an objective so the ground team has something to do. So, like, we can have a right. ground convoy of people. Like, there's no fucking real context for that in the verse. There's no real context for you to deploy 30 clicks away and drive in a convoy and then shoot missiles at a, a, a big-ass reclaimer that's sitting there in the desert. Like, that's not going to happen. Anybody that's playing the game organically, they would just lift off and take away, take off. They would just leave. But So they had to yeah. make these, like, rules that box you in. Um, and, and so that, so that their, their whole platoon that they've built, they built this platoon, they recruited people on the pretense that you will get in here and you will be able to use your ballistas and your tanks. And they're like, hell yeah, I'm a fucking motorcade boy. I'm a convoy man. And they, they blast that music. I'm a convoy. And they go out there and they're like, this is the gameplay I want. But it's not available, and in the verse, it's not applicable, and in the verse, it's not real. Like, we could drop a, a team of privateers with railguns on you faster if you're holding a position, and we could, we've could we done this. We've blown up ground vehicles. A ground team is probably most powerful. So the Pathfinders, they got pissed at us that we consult, we played their game. We're like, you're, you're just doing this to do this, so we're not even going to meet you there. We're just going to play about our win condition. What's the win condition? Is to protect this thing? Well, we're going to just devote all of our forces to that then. Because we don't have a ground group. We don't have ground vehicle guys. We have privateers that can do anything. So if you make some silly willy nilly ground objective with that's designed for ballistas and tanks, and it's not a win condition, we're like, why would we even play that shit? Yeah. So we're here to fucking I would, uh, do the best thing possible. Anyway. So we just tore down uh, potentially a bunch of people's interesting gameplay. And I and I know people are either going to comment yeah, or not. They're like, yeah, fuck you guys. That's your opinion. And you're right. You're 100% yeah. right. It is just our opinion. And this is how we want to play the game. So we're not by any means suggesting don't do it. We're yeah. just saying from what we see from our perspective, it looks like maybe this is not a viable option anymore. Yeah, However, I will point. say having been blessed by CR himself to be a part of the tech preview for Pyro, there was a mission that I ran the other day oh, that cool. did, ha did not have a jump point. Like it just didn't have a, like you could not jump to it. Um, So in my mind, I was like, oh, that might actually be kind of cool. If like people wanted to do a convoy-esque, you know, like yeah. training thing or like work on, truck communications or convoy community or whatever right like oh. if that's your gameplay why not go to the last jump point drop your vehicles off and convoy to that location so right? you, you like if you were genuinely searching for this type of gameplay it's oh. there you just have to find it did you still have a marker for the objective for that little mission yeah the marker oh. for the objective was there but there was just no yeah. i could not jump to it i think i spent i don't know five to ten minutes flying to the objective which, like, most gamers are like, why would you fucking spend two hours driving when you could just fly for five minutes? Well, again, everybody plays this game differently. Yes, good so point. So if you are that truck driver or that ballista driver, that tank driver, maybe you do set up, or logistics guy, maybe you do set up a logistics convoy with troops and then get there and you can practice coordinating and reconnaissance and movement and truck communications yeah. and, you know, vehicle formations and all yeah. this other stuff. All the while, you're still completing an objective towards you're, completing something in Star Citizen. Like, yeah, you're doing a viable tactic, you know? and you're still getting the gameplay right. you want. I think that's the difference. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for like pulling back on the reins on that. Because not to undermine, no. I that would be sick if if vehicles were more viable. I've done ballista mm -hmm. work. I've done uh, we've done tank convoys just for fun. Yep. But to like have an entire group of people that you have to cater your ops to it. That's different than like the game actually giving you an opportunity to make your gameplay right. viable. That's, that's a huge. What I loved difference. about Pyro is it seemed like there were four or five ways to complete an objective. 
there's the uh, gamer way, which is like get there, get it done, get the fuck out, right? And that's a viable gameplay. That's totally fine. Yeah, cheese there's it. the opposite side of the spectrum, which is hardcore people who want to drive the truck. Yeah, 10, or role play 20, 30, 40 clocks, yeah. cl- clicks, right? And role play that and go through that. And now you can do it by accepting a mission in Star Citizen. So I would I would argue that instead of and, and 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 still do it if you want to, but and maybe you do bring in another org and they are your op four while you're moving to this mission, right? Or something along those lines. But look at the game. The, the game developers are doing stuff. They're they're listening. They're watching. They are responding to what type of stuff we want to do. You just have to be willing to break out of your current mold, like mentality and look outside the box a little bit, right? And if you do, I think there's tons of gameplay like that out there that doesn't require 18 hours of setup and three yes. minutes of fucking execution. Yes, and, and a large part of that is due to CIG delivering more content. Um, yep. and yeah, and, and I think we've done a good job even before CIG was really you know, hammering away like they are now. I think we've done a really good job is building an org not around a specific type of gameplay, but around a community and around emergent gameplay that's what what's applicable. And that's working for us. Yeah, yeah, it's working for us. So do do you. Do you boo boo? Right? That's a famous phrase here. That's from Echo himself. Hey, 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 you you do you, boo boo. That's the thing. Um so yeah, do do you, but this is just our perspective. If you're at all listening to this podcast, like this is just us. This is our hobby. Like, don't take this too seriously. Like, you can turn yep. this off at any moment and go go play, go in a vehicle convoy. Go, <laughs> you don't have to listen. Go to play them for eight hours. Yeah. Um, but on this note, too, we got to get to, we talked about Riddick on this last little thing. This was so cool because it was emergent, because we exploited mm-hmm. a weakness in a lot of orgs share. So those of you in the receiving org of this thing, don't get too, don't take it too personal, but... We've made these same mistakes. We opened up an event to the server, and Griefernet came in and fucked us sideways. Uh, ruined the whole thing. And so don't get hung up on... I think our overarching point, Echo, if you could agree with this or not, let me know. Our overarching point is the verse is a sandbox. It's like this fluid thing. And if you try to make these rigid ops, uh, a lot of setup, a lot of time. It's just like you might be... You might be disappointed with the outcome unless you, you've done this a lot, right? I, I don't know if you agree with that, but it's uh, there's a lot of vulnerabilities to that style of gameplay, would you say? Yeah, I think if you're going to be a leader or founder, right, whatever title that falls for you, I think you just – you need to do your – your community service by like reevaluating your processes every once in a while and making sure that they still fit one within whatever originally you set up. And then two star citizen, right? If that's your stick is star citizens, your stick, then you need to make sure like, you know, there's some orgs that are still doing things from like 3.0 and it's like, dog, the game has like come such a long way. Why are you still doing the same thing? Oh, well, this is what we know. Yeah. Okay, I mean that's cool, dude. But you know, yeah, yeah, uh, that's and I, I guess what we're trying to say, dude, is that we've we've done a great job of staying flexible and still having like yeah. some rigidity in our structure, so we have a backbone. Uh, but then just really focusing on what the game is giving us right now and and applying that. Um, I'd like to dive a little deeper in um, while still maintaining the integrity and respect of every group involved. Because we had an awesome opportunity pop up. This latest video, again, go check it out. It's our latest the privateer shipboarding action. Um, and we gained a top, or a top, a ton. We gained a ton of shit from this. So um, there was a comment out there. We'll, we'll probably ping you in this episode so you can come check this segment out. So Mallory, if you could timestamp this for us right now, um, this is where this certain individual should come check it out. Bink, yeah, boom, right here. Um, we appreciate your con, your your comment here. This is awesome, mm-hmm. and I think we your comment was excellent. And I w- I would like to explain further upon what we gained. So I'll read here from the comment. He says nothing was gained from this quote unquote raid where the vast majority of us were down to hell. Blah 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 blah. He goes on. Um, he's claiming that our our operation or our privateering would have fallen apart. 
um, blah, 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 of certain, certain events, certain people were downed. It wasn't, yeah. The whole point of this um, was a test in, in our efficiencies in certain ways. So there's a claim made on a comment that we didn't gain anything as privateers. And let me, let me ask you this. I'll ask Echo this. Do you think that gaining, like, first off, what is there to gain in the Star Citizen universe right now, Echo? Nothing. Everything is, every, nothing. There's nothing, nothing to gain. Ga Game-wise, there's nothing to gain. Yeah. Ships, money, parts, guns, armor, fucking boxes, like experiences is, is what yeah. what you can gain in the in the game of Star Citizen yeah. right now. There's... In my humble opinion, that's the only thing you can gain and keep in Star Citizen at the moment. Uh-huh. Yeah. AUEC, cool. You can stack that shit up, but what's going to happen? It's fucking wiped as soon as Chris Roberts waves his hands. It's gone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, cargo. Uh, yeah, I so got a ship. I, I would argue that... Gaining AUEC is not as important as learning how to gain AUEC. Yes. Right? So the experience of gaining AUEC versus gaining it. Yeah. Right. For this particular individual, we gained mountains of privateering experience here. Mountains, literal experience in proof of concept, communications, coordination, logistics, tactics, teamwork comms discipline like the list goes on if i if i sat down and wrote this down for you it would be a fucking page and a half and i say this with I a smile have a page it. and a half <laughs> yeah he's got, probably got a page and a half that goes all about documents and he loves that shit because i mean from your experience in the real world military you were writing 40 page op orders for your boys that's how important those details are right uh, yeah. So that's yeah, a page and a half for Star Citizen might seem a lot, but that's that's very surface level for Echo. He pulls back a lot on that. Like, hey, this is a video game, <laughs> but that yeah, page right, and a half, right. it's a real thing. So uh, to claim that we haven't gained anything from this, uh, I think you are very short sighted, my friend. I think you missed the whole point of an organization in, in Star Citizen, and it's not just you. I think it's every single org. You guys are mm -hmm. thinking about what's right in front of you. That's it. You're thinking about what the game giveth right away. But we've made an organization that's lasted so long and provided such opportunity, like just amazing gameplay for for like a, almost three years now. What are we coming up on? Two plus. Uh, for 2021, sure. I guess it was just me and you. And yeah. now we're in 20, end of 2023. So we're six know, months what, away from strong. Yeah, we're six months away or so from three years. And uh, yeah. we're a small group. We look at uh, some other groups, and there are three, four, five, six hundred people, um, but they they can't organize, right? So here's the truth: is this? If you go watch the video, the org is mentioned there. We don't need to hammer their name in; it's it's out there. So go watch that latest video, and see like that org. It, it took them two hours, which is pretty common. It's the benchmark. It took them almost two hours or an hour and a half. I might be wrong on the time. It took way too long for you to organize a nine versus nine way too long. Uh, we've been doing oh, this. A long... it was that small. Yeah. <laughs> nine versus nine, dude. Um, we took, we, we've been doing this for fucking years and we've ordered, we've organized 25 versus 25 way faster, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay. But we're, we're an hour plus into this thing. So these are takeaways for you guys. Uh, so get your shit together like that. And you'll be good. Also, don't don't open up your events to the server if you don't ex want to get third partied. If the event is around getting third partied, that's a different story. We've done events like that, and we open it up to the general chat. Or plan for it. Or know now you are going to get third party. Yeah, yeah you're plan to be third partied when you open it up to Amen. the local, like the general chat. Amen. Have securities and 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 contingencies mm -hmm. in place to protect against that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. We, and we're coming from a place of long time doing this. Like, how, how many years have we been doing this, Echo? Six, seven years we've been playing Star Citizen. In with Star orcs. Citizen? Yeah, prob probably. Six, six years, I 2014? think. 2014? Yeah, 2014, 15. Maybe, maybe more. 2015? Like, if we compile the total with orgs, like, probably six years. Five five years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we've yeah. been playing Star Citizen longer, but with, like, coordinated orgs event, right? Right. So, right. we're not just coming from a place of, like, bullshittery. We're, we weren't out here to, like, grief you. We're not fucking pirates. We're not here to take your booty, your bounty. 
Like we're here to, to test our shit and we saw an opportunity and we took it because all of our privateers have a Minuteman mentality. We're in the right place with the right equipment at the right time. Those three things. Okay, so we organized 11 people within 10 minutes and you guys couldn't organize two teams of nine. Like, so you're underselling that horribly. You <laughs> yeah, organized please. 11 people, a logistic ship, air coverage. Uh, I'm pretty sure people were spread all over the verse and not even in Discord at the time. So, like, you know what I mean? And was able to make and conduct reconnaissance. It was just like, uh, it was I mean, a culmination. You named, uh, like, hmm. yeah, man, like, there was a lot that we put in that you put, I say we, you put into that, the team put into that. And it, it was, I think I came in in like the last 30 minutes, right? As you guys were about to kick off. And I don't know how much planning was done before that, but like people were able to get to the logistics ship, get geared up if they weren't geared up, rearm, organize, get on a ship, get deployed, enter the hang, enter the 890, clear the 890, take the 890 to Grim Hex and leave everything there for everyone to come and 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 play. You know what I mean? Like that, mm -hmm. that's a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's break it down even further. So, like you said, we had we had a seven man ground team, six plus me. I was like an infiltrator or whatever you want to call it. So reconnaissance on the ground, that was me. I infiltrated the party because it was open, open to the verse. I politely asked to join. I was given all the respect in the world. I gave it back. Cool. And we completely waited and coordinated for your little event to kick off. That's clearly stated in the video. So that went. Uh, we, we were respectful of your operation, and we came in and saw an opportunity to, number one, organize a ground team, organize a logistic ship, organize air cover, and then coordinate over two different voice channels, Discord and TeamSpeak, with those teams to coordinate a, a surgical strike. And so we came in, and we took your 890 jump. The goal, we set our own objective in the verse, because guess what? We weren't playing by your rules. We were playing by our fucking rules. That's how it goes. We came in. We stole your 890 jump. We left everybody rest as out of respect just to show you. And we gained so much from our proof of concept. We can rapidly deploy our team anywhere in the verse, any fucking time, any day, and, and have a successful outcome because we set our own win conditions in the verse. We were not a part of your little operation. We were not a part of your little PV, 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 PV. We weren't a part of that shit. So when you say this, I guess that's what makes you privateers, I guess. Even pirates would have gained something from all that. You missed the mark, my boy. You missed the mark, my boy. We would have left, even if you had fucking weevil eggs everywhere. Millions of dollars of AUEC. We would have left that fucking shit for you guys. We would have been honorable. Because that shit doesn't matter. AUC is going to be fucking wiped. But our processes will, will carry on patch to patch to patch to patch. That's the only thing that's substantial. That's the only thing that lives on forever is your organization, your group, your team, your friendships. Nothing else matters. AUEC, or if we lose a Kraken, or if we lose a fucking ship, if I lost my subscriber helmet. <laughs> None of that shit matters, dude. So to this org and to this person in the chat, uh, you kind of rubbed, uh, you're successful. You rubbed me wrong. But I needed to uh, dedicate an entire podcast to this fucking question because shout out to our privateers. Love them. Fucking it's proof of concept. We can do it. It's just an opportunity to look at the game from a different perspective. And mm -hmm. I guess it sucks that it was like we didn't there was no like personal attack there. Right. Like no. there was no like, oh, we're going to find the USC. and We're going to fucking destroy their life. No, it was just a chance yeah. encounter. We didn't grief and you guys. It, if the game turns out to be that way, which that's the way it is trending currently, that's going to happen more and more often, right? Yeah. Like, so uh, I, I guess, like, don't be afraid to do stuff that you were doing like that. Like, don't, 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 like, not do it anymore, right? Like, that's how you're growing your community. Just prepare for it, right? Exactly. Just plan for that contingency of, like, what happens if Daft and Echo bring their dipshits in and ruin our party then plan for it what do, are you going to do do you have four guys that are dedicated to security yeah. ship security that are not a part of the event other than hey man i need you to stand here in case some shit happens right exactly yeah the the contingencies we plan for if it's not operational in the verse we don't really dedicate time to it 
if we can find a viable way to make a ground convoy, we will. But if it's not viable in the verse on a day to day, like, why would we do that? Right. So we're not going to go out of our way anymore to set up these logistic, these, these ridiculous ops that just require that, that create gameplay that doesn't really have an end game in mind or a context yet. Uh, we might occasionally just for fun, for shits and giggles, but like, um, yeah, we, we don't really owe a specific gameplay to our privateers or to our members. And I think, I hope this is unburdening for a lot of org leaders out there who might see this. You don't owe a specific type of gameplay to your group. If you've done, if you do, you might have boxed yourself in, right? Because we're at the mercy of CIG's development, right? We're at the mercy of life as well. And so me as a leader, I think that was a big part of burnout for you and I, why we kind of stopped doing Stuck in the Nail, right? Echo is like, and even though we built this org where we don't require a specific gameplay to people, it's just really, it kind of weighs on you because you got these people spending their free time with you and you want to provide content, especially you as a Twitch streamer before and me as well. Like we've been in this like content game and <laughs> And like, if you have a following or people that are willing to hang out with you in, in a virtual environment like this, you kind of like, oh, a little bit of structure and gameplay to them, right? Or am I wrong? Yep. Uh, you, you, uh, yeah, I mean, you do, right? Like, why are you coming to play with us? Well, this is how we want to play the game, right? Like, this is, we, we want to uh, evaluate the game and play it the way that it, we think that it's playable, right? Like, and I think that's why a lot of people join orgs one for the team gameplay. Right. So like, if you love flying ships, maybe you join a virtual air force, right. Or, or if you love ground stuff, maybe you join a virtual, you know, uh, infantry force and, um, you know, other people want to combine all that stuff and that's great. And, and that, you know, you can do that, but there's just no context for it right now in the game. Like I, I can't think of any reason why I would want to go to, why I would want to have ground vehicles, air logistics all stacked together. Like it would just be people flying around for no reason. Like there would be no end objective for it. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, it doesn't hurt to practice that stuff, you know, and, and, and yeah. develop and, and define it so that when you do need air, well, now I can stack air on here. Okay. Well, I, I, I need logistics now. Well, now I could stack logistics, right? Like, it, but to, to, to like, I don't know, man, to, to, to <laughs> develop a plan and plan for eight hours and, and then have 20 minutes of gameplay so that you specifically, like, orgs are very selfish when it comes to like org Vigor or stuff. They only want what they want. That's it. Yeah. And they're, and they're using other orgs to get a, a elicit a, an explicit response from them. And uh, I'm just, I don't have fun eliciting or giving responses, specific responses to other orgs. It doesn't really do anything for me unless there's a two-way street there where it's like, hey, cool, I see you want to do this. We also want to practice this. So, like, let's do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, other, other than that, I mean, it's just like, let's just let's just meet every org organically like we did recently with the USC. Let's just yep. – we'll just go. If we see an opportunity, we're going to take it. You know, if you go read yep. our uh, our little – the, the little bit of RP that we have in our org, you know, we're just a concord of spacefarers that want to leverage opportunities in the verse. And uh, we, UEC is like probably third or fourth on the list. We don't, just don't give a shit about it. We've had it wiped so many times we don't care. So to, to claim that we haven't gained anything from that action, I think it speaks volumes in the video, what we gained. And we proof of content. It was completely organic. We, uh, Everything we do, that's standard operating procedure for us. And uh, it's worked a lot. We've had other organic opportunities in the verse that that's helped out with. And this was uh, kind of like our first official organically happening boarding action where we saw an opportunity and we took it. So I think we gained quite a bit from that. And I know our privateers had a fucking great time doing the things that's fucking part of our daily day-to-day -day play, play style. So great success, yeah. as in the words of Borat. Great success. <laughs> so anyway, we, I kind of think we kind of beat that dead horse. It's a great video, a little bit boring at first because it's setting up a lot. We're we're showing we're we we edited anytime there wasn't chatter or talk, I just cut that out. 
it's just to speed it up. But that is like one for one what happened. No doctoring of footage to make us look good or them look good or bad or worse or whatever. So excellent, excellent time. And I, I look forward to way a lot more of that in the future. Also, uh, Echoes, Oris, and Platforms vision or video is up there too. If you really want a good taste of what it's like to be a privateer, go watch that video. What is that? Like almost 40 minutes of footage. Uncut, raw, this is how we operate. Just yep. day to day team stuff and and yeah, like we we pride ourselves on and you can back this up too, but we pride ourselves on every privateer being capable to do anything on the ground. And so we had a team in your video of like four or five, six guys that don't necessarily roll in a team all the time every day, right? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, oh, shit, I'm just now coming back. Uh, what was Alexi was there. Gunner was not normally a pilot, but he has been recently and he flew, flew really well. Mm -hmm. Was Weasel in that? I can't remember who was all in that. Oh, Doc Hammer was in that. He's a new PP guy. Like, like it, it, it just, it was cool. And the reason I posted it was because I was like, oh, this is the vision, right? Mm -hmm. Like you were taking people with different experience levels putting them together and pointing them out on an objective and they're completing it in a clear, concise, communicative way. Right. Yeah. Cause right now, if you do things the gamer way, nothing wrong with that. It's just really easy. Mm -mm. You can really grind. Mm -hmm. And we have moments where we just like, all right, Hey, chill, let's chill out on the tactics. Um, and let's just grind these missions out so we can get rep in the Orison system or whatever. So there's a place for that. Um, but more than likely, what, what's happened lately on these Orson platforms is we've run into organic PvP. And so we kind of were like, hey, let's tighten up and play like we're expecting PvP. And so uh, it's been really helpful in just shaping a mentality and everybody's coming together. So different skill levels, different understandings of the game, different understandings in our community. We can all come together and just have some really effective communications and some effective gameplay. Um PVP or not, I think I don't think you guys ran into PVP on your video, but it was uh, just really good by the book processes. So, PVE action, yes, yeah, PVE, yeah. which is a great yep. backboard to bounce your standards like off of. Like if this works in PVE, you know, it might collapse in a PVP situation, but at least we have this basic understanding of he goes left, I go right. He goes this way, I back him up in this sense, right? And it's really been able to scale up to a lot of emergent gameplay recently, and we've been able to get in the mix at SPK. We're, we're down in players left and right. We might lose one privateer to every, like, six people we kill in the, in the verse. Um, and that's just because it's in the verse. It's random. Um, but we usually get that privateer rezzed up, and he's good to go with some injuries, but we're still a full-man team, no losses. Because we just stay ready. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. You know what I mean? It's not like that we're such amazing PVPers all the time that we're so good at shit. It's just we just apply I mean, team. You tactics. put me in Star Marine against the top fragger, I'm dead. Like yeah. I, I, I am not <laughs> I am not competitive in that scene any longer. And there are people that will quote unquote shit on me and get fucked me and fucking noob yeah. me and whatever the cool new buzzword for yeah, they'll Action meta FPSs, but they'll meta you around. Right. They'll, they'll run. But you take that guy it. out of there, right? That's his environment. You take him out of there and put him in our environment. He's not going to do the same. He might get a couple of us because of his, you know, ability to to quick think and shoot. But he's not going to get us all. Yeah, yeah. Skill is a great baseline to have, right? But it, it's no match for when you're outgunned and out teamed, and out logisticed, if that's a term. Just Log team play. Yeah, team play. Period. Plus logistics, if he does if he does wipe the whole team, uh, you guarantee fucking T we're gonna get back there really fast, and we're gonna go again, and then the odds are well. Not only that, less. but I know there's a I know there's an action FPS player in the comments or watching that's like, wait a minute, uh, uh I've wiped multiple teams. I would argue were those teams coordinated, yeah, or were they just a few dudes hanging out? Yeah, I mean exploiting pixels, you know exploiting disorganized people in a chaotic environment. That's the whole thing. That's why special forces in real life are so successful. Is because they they don't go up when it's even odds. They pick right. and choose, and they they time it and they they swing the odds in their favor. That's like warfare completely. Go read Sun Tzu, The Art of War. 
He he's like, if you have a chance to meet your enemy head on in an even fight, don't even fucking do it. <laughs> it's not about winning. It's not about a KD spread. It's just about survival, and that's why we like the verse so much. It's just about survival. It's about your own win condition being met. You know, the U USC in this little battle they had, uh, they had their own little win conditions. They spent two hours setting up this shit. We don't fucking care. We saw an opportunity and we were privateers. We're a concord of spacefarers that just band together to leverage the opportunities in the verse. We don't owe allegiance mm -hmm. to anybody. So we come in, we saw an opportunity to test our tactics and we did it and we filmed it. And we're putting it out there for people to get better. Because we want better competition. We want this game to flourish. We want this game to grow. We want every org to be capable in combat. We, want, we don't want care bears in the verse. We want people that are staying strapped, ready to rock. You know, and then I could get all RP here and be like, and the Vanduul threat is rising. Like, <laughs> you got to stay ready. <laughs> but yeah, we, we no, want... No, the reality yeah. of the matter is the griefer threat is rising. The yeah. PvP threat is rising. <laughs> yeah. Like, prepare for that. Yeah, the sandbox is coming together. And like <laughs> these orgs that have been in isolation, we've talked about this on previous episodes. Go look them up. But orgs, we tend to stay in these little bubbles. And you know the phrase I'm about to say. It's my favorite phrase. But these orgs, they start smelling their own farts and they start liking it. We were guilty of this. We're oh, speaking from experience. We did this. Yeah. We thought we were the most badass group of people because we thought we did something unique in the verse. Guess what? Some other groups did it and they did it better. And so we were like, oh, shit. And we didn't know that until we really started PvPing. Right? We really yep. started... Getting away from the mill sim pomp and circumstance ministries of fucking magic and kernels and whatever. What's effective? What's actually effective in the verse is way different than what's effective in your org. Okay. If your org, I'm, I'm about to go on a limb here, not to bash your gameplay, go get your gameplay however you want. But if when it comes to effectiveness in a PvP sense in the, in the verse, Pound for pound, who's going to win and control a resource? Because that's going to happen soon. Pyro, who is gonna, who's going to come out on top in a skirmish? If your org is worried about someone having the certification of something, you're probably going to fucking lose in the verse. Because we've all been playing this game for multiple years. And if not, the people have been playing it enough. They have skill. We've all been gaming for our entire life. Anybody that's come across Star Citizen has played video games a lot. Someone doesn't just like turn around like I was a former triathlete. Now I'm going to get into video games. They don't start with Star Citizen. There are no newbie gamers here, like hardly any, if maybe one or two. So you've been gaming for a while now, right? So like the excuse, <laughs> the excuse is everybody's fucking good at games. It's easy to click pixels. It's easy to be good. It's easy to learn the learning curve. There is a steep learning curve here, but if someone's vested in a Star Citizen, we've had someone start playing Star Citizen a month ago, and they're one of our like most shining prospects new to BP, and they're adding so much value. And we did not block them with this certification, did we, Echo? There's nothing no, not blocking like... someone. Anyway. Yeah, I... I... I guess the point all, uh, to wrap it all up, right? It's like, <laughs> just be open, yeah. you know, just be open to, to, to maybe view it from a different perspective. And, and, you know, if you maybe take one side of your uh, taped off part of the sandbox and open it up, you might actually expand your organization even further. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. Well said. A lot more calmer than I was. I'm, I'm getting pretty passionate about this today. <laughs> well, you were part of it, and and I and I understand that some in the gaming community, the gaming world, if one gamer feels slighted by another gamer, they're going to come out and start throwing all kinds of passive aggressive shit at people, and and that you know we're humans, so like humanity is going to take over. And be like, Wait a minute, that's not what I wanted. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. so I get it. I yeah, understand. so here I am but in this cycle. At the end of the day, like it. it it wasn't meant to to shit on anybody. It was meant to just practice our shit. It was very selfish in nature. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. um, but but you kind of have to be right. Like, yeah, great. Point. And, and and then at the end of it, I don't think anybody was like, "Eat dicks, we rock." I think everyone was more like, "Hey, man, we love to show you what we did and why we did it." Right? Yes. Uh, if you're interested. 
Yes. And uh, I'm sorry for the jadedness today, you know, because I am susceptible to Don't that be. aspect of humanity. It's a Marine Corps birthday. You can do whatever the fuck you yeah. want. Yeah, it's a Marine Corps birthday. I'm going yeah. go to go buy a pony and ride it into the <laughs> bar tonight. Uh, I am excited. You heard of her first. Yeah. Daft is buying a pony. And I'm going to ride it into a bar and drink for the Marines. I need another beer. <clears throat> Yeah, I got some more scotch here. I'm just, it's nine. A, it's like nine or ten a.m. now. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, what what else do we need to cover today? Now that we're returned, I think I, I've said some sharp words, and I stand by them because I feel passionate about this game, and I guarantee you, I've put more time and energy in prepping our community to be ready for this kind of shit than most. Um, and uh, that's where I'm going to end that. But what else do we want to talk about? You were talking something. Uh, was that – there's parallax now in optics? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if parallax is the right word. I Honestly, I'm sure somebody is going to be like, it's not parallax. It's parabellum, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you are not in the military. And I'm parabellum. Like, right, whatever. Um, they're, they're adding some kind of – like ocular distortion to to the to optics in game in, in in on in Star Citizen, and or or at least they displayed that they're going to do that in Star Citizen. I'm not going to say they're, they're they are adding it because all we saw was a demo. But I, I was just curious about like I don't know that I'm pumped on that because after the you know thousands of hours I put behind an optic, a magnified optic, like. I don't ever remember. I mean, sure, but is that something that CIG needs to focus on for immersion? Is this a gamified thing? Try, they're trying to mix real life with a gamified thing? Because I I would yeah. almost argue that if you go out and pick up a gun today with a magnified optic, initially you're going to be like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, cool. Look at this. Like, Look how it does this. But then after that, once you start shooting the gun, you're like, you don't even notice it anymore. That's true. So why have a why have something like that if it i don't know maybe you will maybe i'm wrong maybe after you use the gun for a while with that magnified optic you just won't see it anymore like maybe it is going to mimic real life I, yeah all i've seen is a video of it so, so it's just i just thought magnified. it was an interesting what's that sorry it's just for magnified optics then like four times or higher or i think they showed off a three or four times optic they didn't really show off like or maybe they did. I was kind of like half hung over this morning when I was watching, catching up on the <laughs> FPS stuff from Citizen Con. But um, yeah, they were talking about it. It just stuck in my mind. Also, because I think that during that time, the guy said something about. I have it written down somewhere or maybe message you about it, but basically like rule of cool. Oh, they were talking about the pistol rule of cool. Never yeah. mind. Completely oh. different thing. OK, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe but, it's. Uh, and that's a good balancing? point. Is that the rule of cool? Like, are you doing parallax, optical parallax for rule of cool? Huh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can understand maybe they're taking an approach for, like, balancing some FPS things. Okay. Because, like, certain optics you could maybe have an advantage of, like, at a slightly longer distance if there's, like, no difference in the ADS time. I think the ADS time is based on the weapon rather than the optic. Okay. So if I put like a four times or like if I put a, a heavier magnified optic on like an SMG, I think like I could bear down on a target in Star Marine or something way faster because of the ADS time and have magnified optics. So I'm wondering if there's like a balance play they're going after. That uh, You got me Maybe. thinking about it and I was like, huh. Like, what advantages do we have in a in a game? Like, even a game like Squad or some other high hyper realistic sim, like uh, Six Days in Fallujah. I don't know if you played that one yet. Like, yeah. w what advantage or what what are they trying to simulate if if they do cause like a a magnified optic thing? You know, like this parallax thing or paradigm right. or whatever parachute. Paradigm I, I don't know. I, and maybe you're right. Maybe it is like. Uh, I mean, what separates? Let's say somebody like me who's got a bunch of time on a on a right on a very specifically on a rifle, a, a five five six platform, versus a gamer guy who you know gamer person who comes up and picks that rifle up, and we're on the range together. What separates us? Is it the gun? Like if we shoot the exact same gun with the exact same shit in it, the exact same bullets, it's there's like and I and I'm hitting the target and he's not. What's the difference? Right, the difference is skill. And I, I appreciate when a game adds that in 
I hate when gamers complain about skill because they're like, oh, I don't have the time. I just want to be Master Chief. And it's like, <laughs> well, then don't play Star Citizen, dog. <laughs> like, yeah. go well, play Battlefield, thing. you know? Yeah. Like, that's that's what that game's for. Yeah, exactly. And, like, the skill required to survive with a team is kind of collectively lower. You could have the highest skill in the world, but you still mm -hmm. cannot watch multiple points of entry effectively. Nope. So that's mm -hmm. that's the thing. Is like the skill only gets you so far when you're by yourself. Same thing in real world. Like when I would teach like a contractor group or whatever, it would be like there there's there's solo CQB doctrine and tactics, but the number one rule is like if you have to clear a building by yourself, don't fucking clear it. Don't. Yeah. Don't even engage. That's the higher yeah. principle. Like, if you're outgunned, outmatched, outnumbered, survive, bitch. Run the fuck away if you can. But if you can't, like, here's some techniques and stuff to do it if you have to. Like, if a cop is alone or whatever is alone. Like, that's the reality of it. And so in the verse, it's like, if you don't have to engage somebody, like, you know, okay, like, we'll do it just for shits and giggles because it's a video game. But, you know, if we right. have if we have a ton of cargo on board or we have another higher priority thing like we'll just won't we'll just avoid it like if we see pirates over brios we're like we don't have to engage that's the beauty of the verse you can we'll just find another we ran into that the other day where yeah. we were going to go to brios and there was like a dude in there just dominating all our air cover so we we're like fuck this we're out yeah but we'll go to another cell location you know clearly then, like, we don't have the air skill to beat this guy yeah and it's like fine currently available in the game is that there is multiple servers until we're all on one shard and we're one universe and it's all chris roberts dream comes to fruition that's viable gameplay if i have 10 million in cargo and there's people on my server ganking people and stealing like well, how about i just fly out into space do a bed log peacefully i'm not in combat and i could switch to an Australian server and then go sell my shit. That's totally viable gameplay. If Griefernet can not come what we did in, the other night. No, I'm just saying it's viable. It's not what oh, we did. Oh, okay. No, because we, we, like we like to prove stuff. We like to test stuff. We're just like, all right, shift. We'll go sell at another location. Stayed in the same server, yeah. right? So not to get confused. But that's viable yeah. gameplay. If you're by yourself selling cargo and you're like, uh, I'm going to risk, I'm going to assess the risk here. Risk management. I don't have air cover. I don't have a ground team to support me to the terminal. I don't have nothing. I got tons of money. Like, how about I just log off and take a smoke break? Come back into another server. <laughs> like, everyone's like, oh. I, I would argue if you're doing that actively in combat, get fucked. But <laughs> yeah, well, you, you can't contact. You can't combat retreat. log now. You can't. Oh, can you not? Oh, you good. You cannot combat That's log. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's like the, before you even get in combat, you can just risk assess the situation and be like, I'm going to avoid combat. I'm not even going to fly in over Brios because guess what? There's going to be a Mantis blocking you or a Cuddy Blue holding yeah. you. And now you got to escape and you're like C2 or Catapult. Well, my dumbass went in there and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm here with another. Uh, I don't I don't remember what Riddick was flying. He was flying something beefy, <laughs> but I had a Super Hornet and. I mean, the dude just melted Riddick and then melted me. So, I mean, I lost something in that engagement yeah. and just decided, like, this is not – I am not skilled enough to, to fight this guy, right? Like, yeah. I'm yeah, gonna, we're... I, it's like beating a dead – you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would just be going in and throwing away all my ships just to try to beat him. Yeah. And so the answer, like, the, the tactical, like, sound answer is, like, just find another server. As, as dumb as that is. Right, like or location or location. Yeah, it's like, yeah, or wait, just be like, you know what? I'm actually gonna go take a coffee break at Seraphim That's Station. That's actually my, my favorite cargo. tactic for gamers because gamers are some of the most impatient <laughs> motherfuckers on planet Earth. Like, yeah. if you wait five minutes, I just did this the other day. I some dude was fucking around in Seraphim and wanted to follow me and thought he was being sneaky. So I literally just sat down in the chair in Seraphim Station. And just sat there for five minutes and watched him like basically ADD all over the place waiting for me to get up. And then he fucked off. Now, to his credit, he fucked off and kept an eye on me. And I got on my elevator, but I was already spooked. So I went down. He saw where the elevator went and then followed me down in another elevator and got to my platform. But I was just like, I can 
you're not sneaky. I can see you, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> impatience is, like, a very common virtue in video gaming. That's true, man. I mean, like, we've we've set multiple teams out on all the sell points for this. Because uh, right now, the, the illicit cargo is super hot, right? Super, super lucrative. Mm. Mm. So, uh, we've had... And some of our new guys have gotten their their teeth cut with some PVP, like awesome. But they sat, they had to sit at a Brio's or a Delvin Scrapyard or whatever it's called. Other places, we had teams and 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 people sitting all over the place. And uh, yeah, we've been able to deny a lot of people selling illicit cargo. It's awesome to see. But it, it took 20, 30 minutes of waiting for a huge payoff. You know that ended up in. Some AUEC, and for a new player, that means a new ship without uh, paying real money for that. So they're like, oh, I get to go explore the Cutlass Black now or the the Valkyrie or the whatever they buy. And, and that's kind of cool, you know, that you have a, an organization set up like we do where we can communicate and offer logistical p- comms and platforms to enable that. And so a new player comes in. They feel like they're part of a team. They're doing something useful. Yeah, yeah I had to wait 20 minutes, but I fucking killed two people at the at the objective yep. and then like i stole their ship and it was like nine million in cargo and like i got the biggest haul because that's how we divvy it up right and you did all the work so anyway and then they're like man i'm this is entry level for privateers this is an entry level position i'm in you know and they're because we focus on the gameplay and what's relevant for the gameplay mm-hmm. um, so we don't just stick somebody in the turret of a ballista and be like you're only a vehicle guy ever and like here's your certification and some people might like that but uh from our our experience it's just not the way to go and so yeah we're just tooting our own horn here yeah. that's why we have a podcast by the way is we toot our own fucking horn all the time just yeah you could away. like we're we're <laughs> pots calling the kettle black right like we're yeah. smelling our own farts over here mm-hmm, too mm-hmm. but th- we're, we're just trying to experience like experience the game and then give you our <laughs> game experience through our lens which is ground combat and first person yes like you know experiences 100%. so and then to any org that's like interface with us you know if you you already know branders privateers we will interface with you and give you everything that we know cuz we're going to execute it our way better than anybody could ever apply it they might develop their own tactic and do it better than us but like yeah. we will impart our knowledge so i think we're in talks with the usc actually with some of their people uh, some of them are oh, pretty yeah. mad that we did that some of them are kind of like whatever but uh we're in talks we might do some diplomacy and like do something why you have to be so mad yeah why you gotta be so mad um but we just want to play the game and so that's what we're always going to prioritize so even if some other orgs like no 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 we're just going to do what we like um and we're going to have our own win conditions and everything like that that are pertinent to what the verse is giving us um and i think that's the end of the day usc i want to come meet you at citizen con and just yes. have a beer with you. That's, that's maybe a crisp high five. A fist cri- bump, you know? <laughs> crisp high five. Know. And that's more likely than ever now, actually. Um, we have some yeah. good things going. I think we should end on kind of like a going forward. What What's exciting about Brander's Privateers going forward, right? Uh, Is this where we cut to the montage of like, blah, 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 yeah. Citizen Con, all our shit. You yeah, know what I mean? That'd be awesome. We don't uh, have one of those. I don't, I don't. I haven't built one of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're we not getting in that. In the future, we'll get a montage going. So yeah. speaking of content like a montage, um, we do have some interns with my company, Blue Form Media. Again, thank you to Mallory. She's she's taking timestamps notes over here, um, chilling, drinking her coffee. And yeah, our company, we center around podcast creation and media content. And so we've gotten some interns recently that will be cutting and clipping some Branders Privateers content. It's a great training bed. So Branders Privateers has content interns, which is fucking awesome. Also, any privateer listening to this, if you're looking for work or if you want to do content for BP, let us know. I could potentially get you paid work doing clip cutting and editing and other YouTube content for our clients as well as PP in the future, hopefully. So we got that going for us. Um, Echo's been working his We're YouTube. offering jobs now? <laughs> we might Holy be. Holy yeah. fuck. We're, I mean, we have two interns that uh, are going to do BP shit. Like, it's crazy. If I may. You may. Def, excuse you may. me for interrupting. Please. But if I may, today's the Marine Corps birthday, and that's all well and great. We're Marines and everything. But how about fucking Mal? Right? Putting all of this shit together, letting us two assholes get in front of a fucking camera and talk our fucking oh. fart smelling talks 
And like, just thank you. So put some fucking love in the comments put for Mal. Put some you know love I mean? for Mal. Fuck Mallory. us. My wife, yeah. our producer, she's been get, a part of get, BP even before BP was a thing. Because she was there. Yeah, shit talk us. us, but then like, yeah. you know, give a has stick tap to Mal. Yeah, dude. Raise your cane and, and shake it in the air and, and, and do a baton twirl and tip your hat <laughs> and drink a drink to Mallory uh, at Blue Form Media. She's fucking killing it, dude. She does this for nine podcasts. This is actually number 10, Mal. What do you got to That's say awesome. for yourself? This is we do ten podcasts awesome. now that we're back with stuck in a nail. My health is deteriorating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Very I don't mean to laugh at that. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I we chuckle because uh, the bluntness and we know it's real. It is real. But uh, Mal, how are you feeling about Blue Form? We have five, well, three employees and two interns now. Uh, where are you at? I think you're. Are you, are you energized? Are you down? Are you? It's absolutely amazing and very draining all <laughs> in one sip of water. Um, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's awesome that we can give people a job that they hopefully enjoy and like and um, it's a good income for them. And we're just excited to grow. And it's awesome that we can do this for BP. And hopefully it makes BP more excited about content. So it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, anybody listening to this um, or any Star Citizen player too, uh, and, and USC, thank you for letting us, well, you didn't let us, but thank you for being able to be content for us. Uh, we appreciate that because our goal is to get uh, BP monetized in some way, shape, or form. So Echo and I are sponsored to go do Stuck in the Nail wherever we like, uh, go to Citizen Con, add value to the FPS community of Star Citizen. So bigger picture stuff when we step away from smelling our own farts, right, Echo, when we stop bragging about BP. This is what we're here for is we want to push and drive and hopefully influence or shape in some way, improve the space of first person aspects of Star Citizen, right? Yep. Um, and then share that experience with people that are watching ship videos 24-7 from Star Citizen because yeah. that's all that's out there. Yeah. And, and if I'm being honest, like Echo and I, we still we still enjoy a good ship video from time to time. Like we, we still have our affinity I mean, for certain ships. But I do get a chub every once in a while. Yeah. Especially if it's a drop ship capable. We're like, oh baby. But uh Super Hornet, you know, just to just to go up. Like what's your favorite fighter class ship? Heavy, medium, or light? You, Whatever. You I mean. don't know if I can answer that. It Evan flows, right? Evan like flows. I will say this. I immediately came back for good better or worse. Again, roast me in the comments if you want to. I don't give a fuck. I came back within like forty eight hours of me playing Star Citizen. I bought a fucking FS, uh, F8. <laughs> That's true. I mean, they I'm, dangle. I'm part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's funny, man. I mean, the F8 is classy. I have resisted. Uh, I've bought a bunch of other stuff that, it, you know, it's not even in con. It's still concept ships. But uh, uh, if I buy something, though, I want it to increase and uh, enrich the privateers and the community that we've built. So I've actually traded some ships in for more more multi-crew dropship or transport-esque mm -hmm. kind of ships. And I'm about to do that again. And I'll tell you this right now. Great. I'll do the same thing. When Star Citizen releases, CIG releases yeah. a proper job, drop ship. Yeah, dude. Again, let's, let's end on this, uh, if you're okay with this. What is, in your opinion, what is the definition of a drop ship? Let's refresh the audience. What is a drop ship as per Echo's belief and Daft's? Uh, me personally, a ship that can get you in, get troops out, pick troops up and get troops out like as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. Like if you take the Terrapins maneuverability with the drop capability of the retaliator and the fucking, uh, defensibility of the Valkyrie, you got your drop ship. Yeah. And like the tally's got great defense too. Um, but just yeah, well, yeah, one more extra gun. But they, yeah, like, dude, hundred percent nailed it. To me, the definition of a dropship is deploying troops without their consent. That's a drop. Oh, ship. I like that. Oh, I haven't heard. That's a fun one. <laughs> if you're strapped yeah. in, like, go watch Edge of Tomorrow, right? I know that's your jam too. That's like. <laughs> That's oh, Chekhov is going to die right now. You and Chekhov hope to be deployed like that, right? 
you don't have a fucking choice. If you're strapped in to one of those drop cables in Edge of Tomorrow, you're going whenever the pie, the whatever it is, if it's the crew chief or the pilot, if they deploy you, you're going. That's the whole point of a drop ship. Dude, I jumped out of planes for a living. I want to jump out of Star Citizen planes. Yeah, that's true. I want to do that. I'm in a video game, and I can't do something I've done in real life in a video game. I know, right, dude? Oh, jump out of the fucking ships, CIG. Give it to me. <sighs> Let me have it. A parachute or like a jetpack. We've talked about ad nauseum. A... Like Fuck. that would just enable every ship to do that. But to me, a rapid insertion of troops means that I press a button as the pilot, and it shits out a ground team of any number that it can, the capacity it can. Carry. What's the What's the new ship that everybody bought that they're flying around right now? What is it? The A1? Is that what it is? A1 Spirit, yep. The A1. You have Crusader. fucking drop pods right there, CIG. <laughs> yeah, individual troop de de delivery systems. Right Aye. there. This would Take help. Take the explosives out and let me put myself in it. Yeah. So the, the reason why the only true ship, there's two ships in the game right now that are true drop ships two the retaliator bomber and the a2 bomber they are the mm. fastest way to deploy troops to the ground ever ever that's right the a2 bomber has those bomb the bomb bays we have been using the shit out of that in eva thanks to gunner you want to get yeah. dropped on on spk well let's have an a2 bomber shit you out like a payload right over it at high speed. I will literally throw my wallet at CIG if they allow me to buy an A1 and replace the bombs with a, a person. With a personnel bomb. drop. Yeah. Or just give it give me half. Give me one side bombs, one side personnel carriers. Like and even if it's not a carrier, just let the doors open on a command. If I open or go into bomb drop mode, that's how we drop. So if I press uh bomb targeting mode or whatever it's called, it's like missile mode for other ships. Uh, it you know, opens... we were talking about jetpacks and all that yeah. shit. An encapsulation, an encapsulation, mm -hmm. right? We're our whole podcast is the nail stuck in the nail, right? The nail, the it's nail. in lore. Yep. Right? But like, why can't you make a nail for the A one? Yeah, it looks exactly like a bomb. And even not, if we could just simultaneously open a trap door and drop people like the Val or like the the A two or the Retaliator, the Spirit has that capability, but we just can't open those little doors at will. So, you know, if I could come in and remove all those bombs and instead of bombs, I could just stand a troop, you know, one privateer on there and then shit them out. That, that would change well, the game, man. And I feel like the encapsulation will keep us safe, right? We're yeah. talking about jetpacks and all that stuff. But, like, if you take the Nox concept and yep. you apply it to a bomb and then you let a person get in that bomb and then, like, there's some anti-grab shit as it hits the ground. Yeah, and even and let them pilot it. The capsule opens and you can fucking FPS. Yeah, and give, give some skill to the person in the bomb where they have, like, a, a set amount of boost that they have to apply at the right time, like, Ooh. to safely land. Otherwise, they're fucked up. And, like, you know, if they, yeah. drop, if they drop with a little bit of a signature so, like, a pilot could come and scoop them out of the air, shoot them out of the air like a paratrooper, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, that would be kind of fun. Um, make it risky. Make it high reward, high risk, right? And, like, so... Yeah. Uh, and of course, that's that's us from like giving a wish list to Santa Claus, but like that might not translate into the uh, the elves making that toy, right? It might not translate into the the coding and the back end and the software, and and that's why we have Cat Katsumushi to tell us. Oh to yeah, up. yeah, to break our hopes yeah, and dreams. He's, I love he's it. An awesome I'm sure it knows no one from CIG is watching this, but I'm sure if they are. So I'm a dev's like, shut the fuck up, you idiots. I'm already working on it. Okay, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the uh, the only the only viable, like the fastest, most rapid troop deployment in this science fiction that we play. I'm sorry, I'm out of the mic. Mal's going to kill me. The most rapid troop deployment that we have is the Retaliator um, and the A2 Bomber. Uh, the Retaliator, I prefer. It's a little more accurate and more manageable. But um, mm -hmm. nothing else is a dropship. They're just transport ships. That's why we call it transport piloting in BP, because I refuse to call anything a dropship unless it rapidly puts troops in the battle space uh, in an unconventional way that's fast and rapid. That's a dropship to me, not a transport. So anything with a jump seat or whatever CIG, fuck that. 
can I get troops in there faster? Even a prowler, I still have to manually, as a player, get out of the little harness and then walk off the ship. That's a Black Hawk helicopter, dude. Valkyrie, Black Hawk helicopter. Cutlass Black, Black Hawk helicopter. Prowler, Black Hawk helicopter. Name them all. If you have to leave a seat and get off of the craft when there's an expeditious, like, yeah, a reason to get off quick, that's not a dropship. It's a fucking transport. They want you to land and take your time, check your gear, check your pockets, make sure you don't leave your water bottle in the seat tray in front of you. You know, like, <laughs> that's not a dropship. It's a transport. So the context of how to re deploy troops rapidly, no one gets it. I think we're the only ones that are barking about it. No one watches this anyway. Yeah, we're so. the only, <laughs> I think we're the only two idiots on the internet that yeah. are like, mm -hmm. oh, drop shit. Drop yeah, and shit. if no. you agree, hit the like button, support this shit, send it to your friends, watch it at work, get in trouble while you slack off on your break, you know, because we all play Star Citizen and it's fucking awesome. So let's, let's, uh, if you agree with this, let's get more uh, tools for ground teams. Let's make combat more relevant. Why do we go to the ground? What's there? What what resources we exploit there? Like right, if I if I soft death a uh, C two, and there's all sorts of goodies on there that I can go sell. Now there's a reason to hit that objective on the ground and have a ground presence and have people posted security and do all sorts of shit, right? Like uh, it would be sick if what what if NPCs put out like distress beacons to like NPCs or other players. So if you're like you know, if you had a crime stat and like uh, I'm out there shooting down bounties and I, I down a bunch of guys with illicit cargo, like a little beacon goes out to some players that have crime stats. You know, I don't know. But it, give us a reason to fight over shit. We need context for that. Um, and yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Dropship. I love talking about dropships because I, I fly them for BP a lot and, and well, Riddick flies them and they're fucking fun. Yeah. So we shit on CIG. Can we praise CIG for a minute? Yeah, let's do that. That's weird, but let's do it. <laughs> Fucking HUD compasses. They're coming. Soon TM. Yeah, they're coming, dude. Our wish, our one wish, that's the one constant that we've talked about in every episode. I think this is episode 16, by the way, uh, of Stuck in the Nail. A little hiatus in between, but that ain't no thing. So, yeah, we every almost every episode we've mentioned a compass and how ridiculous it is that we don't have a ground compass. And I don't know. I was just thinking if we ran all our videos through AI, I wonder how many times it would count the word compass. Mm. <laughs> That's an interesting point. Let me get some stats on the words we say. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think uh, that's a great topic too. We can, we can go refresh and re hit some of these topics. Um, maybe next episode will be a little more pointed about what's coming for ground gameplay. We'll give you some updates on that and give you our thoughts on it as well. Um, and I think we're shooting for two to three episodes of Stuck in the Nail a month. Ideally, we'd like to do one a week if Star Citizen is relevant enough to do that. I don't want to, you know, overdo it. But I think uh, Echo and I, we have interns, we have a team, we have people to do this. So there's more content coming your way is what I'm trying to say. Um. But yeah. Our penises have enlarged since the last Stuck in the Nail episode is basically what we're getting at. Yes. Our capabilities have grown. <laughs> so yeah. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> That's all right. It's uh, the Marine Corps birthday, dude. Like, yeah. fucking, this is like a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the political correct correctness needs to get in the backseat when it's the Marine Corps birthday, because... By the way, watch the Marine Corps birthday message. It is fucking visceral as fuck. Is it? I saw that. Oh, on my dude! YouTube, like I haven't watched it yet. I've watched it every year, and I'm like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, get the fuck out of here with your PC yeah. fucking crybaby bullshit. You could tell the Marines that made this one haven't been in combat because they fucking want it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, dude. And I mean, considering what's going on in the world, I don't want to bring that into the podcast, but. There's a high chance. There's a lot of friction. So the Marine Corps is, we notice the little things that they're doing differently now. Like, uh, I saw this meme the other day. It was like, the Marine Corps, the, or the military put out a recruitment video. It was the Marines, but the military put out a recruitment video with all white men doing cool shit. I think it was the Army, actually. I'm sorry. So there was an Army recruitment video of all white men jumping out of a fucking airplane. And they're like, you know we're going to war soon, because they... <laughs> 
<laughs> Holy shit. Because I didn't put any other yeah, We digress uh, hard from Star Citizen. Yeah, they're <laughs> uh, I thought that was so funny. But yeah, there's 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 a level of like realism that needs to be discussed, even in the Star Citizen community and outside in other circles and stuff, but the signs are on the wall and like so far the signs on the wall right now with CIG are really good. And it's enabled a lot of fun gameplay. I think more people are uh, playing and then more people are getting into PvP because Star Citizen has enabled that with certain mission types and other things. And um, I mean, the other day it was like so five. thank you. Yeah, so thank you, CIG. It's good to see that. And we had a we had a little skirmish on an Orison platform. It was five of us versus five of them in some of the most confined spaces I've ever seen in Star Citizen coming out of an elevator, right, in an Orison building. Uh, and we got, we got wiped and then we got lucky and then we wiped them back. And it was like, you know, op opportunity and preparation when they meet, that's called luck. And what uh, if it was one man with five guns? <laughs> I'd be like, I'd call hacks, dude. He's hacking. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of hacks. That's cool, man. Yeah. In Star Marine, you can watch it. People turn hacks off and on to maintain their 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 reputation or their their standing on the leaderboards. So if they're not really serious about playing, you'll see like a pretty even match, up to like five or six kills, and then you'll see one guy turn his hacks on and he'll get headshots for eight kills. And then you're like, man, that guy's really good. That's my first thought. I'd never go, hey, he's a cheater, until I see him fucking flip the corner or pre-fire me. I'm like, mm, okay. And then I'll just sit on the death screen and so I'll, just, I'll just watch the kill feed for a little bit and watch him stack up eight kills. Then he'll turn the hacks off and then the, the group will catch up with like, you know, 15 kills to 17 kills. And then as soon as they get close, then he turns the hacks back on and he ends the game with fucking eight, nine, 10 headshots in a row just to fucking victory. So he stays leaderboard. Go play Star Marine for an hour and you'll see that. It's fucking ridiculous. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody running around with looking like turtles with no... no. no if I wanted to play there. those players, I would just go play Battlefield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I, mean, I want more for my gaming. I'm old now. You know that? Like, I'm old. Yeah. So I'm not like an, a 22-year-old kid searching fame in esports and, and, and you know, yeah. trying to get blowies from, from being the top fragger. <laughs> they don't get blowies, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not. I don't. <laughs> maybe, so maybe. What do I know? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of gamer girls out there that probably, you know, uh, oblige. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's really fun as, as you mature. We're lickies. Yeah, you know. We're <laughs> oh man, but there, there's as you get older, you kind of start understanding. Like, you know, if if you look into it, of course, you, you got to find out to know about it. But you start understanding like where you get your dopamine from on a daily basis. Um, and knowing that, knowing how you get dopamine from a video game is really, really important. It shapes how you play mm -hmm. the game, especially Star Citizen. True. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for quick dopamine, don't even play Star Citizen, man. Go, go play Star Marine or go play Battlefield. Right? You can go get, you can go get the beeps and the boops and the kills and the, you know, and the, what do they call it? The flashy uh, messages and the and yeah. the, 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 the 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 salt. From the chat and yeah and the, which you can get sold from chat and star citizen too i suppose yeah they actually added chat to star marine too it's kind of bad <laughs> but uh oh boy yeah or like what is it when you like go and assassinate somebody and like call of duty it like goes into that little animation um hmm. where they do some crazy assassination like pull out six different guns and shoot them 10 ways to sunday oh yeah like the little cutscene where they're like yeah and they're like doing jujitsu on them like and then they for some reason like pull out yeah, a gun like, and um, yeah, right. that's, that's cool and all, but that's meant that's, if you like that, it's very satisfying and it's meant and engineered to just play off your dopamine. So you, it's a big payoff. You're like, man, I, I, I down these three people. And then one guy came through the door and I, I got behind him and executed him. That's cool. Yeah. But it's all designed for your dopamine. So understanding that makes hey, your hey, gameplay. Don't pull the curtain too far back because we're designed for their dopamine too. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we design our own dopamine too. I think that's the difference, right? Um, for yeah, us, it have was, our dopamine. 
our dopamine hit was uh, delivering the USC's 890 jump with all of them down. Whether we down them or not, doesn't matter. We take your ship and we put it there. That was our dopamine hit. That was our win condition that we set. And then also Chankov's or, dopamine Or an hit. unreleased video from Pyro. Yeah. Where we had some also some really interesting oh, recent PvP play. Dude, I got to just shout that out real quick. And then we got to wrap this up. Matt, how are we doing on time, by the way, Mallory? We're at like an hour 30. Oh, fuck, man. We can really talk. So Pyro, though, uh, let's end on that. What was your thoughts? Okay. We Loved it. You came back to SC. You've been on hiatus for a little bit. The boys were still rocking. Seamless. We just picked up right where you left off, like riding a fucking bike again. And we dove into Pyro. Elaborate. Content was great. Missions were great. Uh, P BP playing in Pyro was great. Uh, player interaction was great. Uh, there's obviously some bugs and stuff, but whatever, dude. Like, if I'm if I'm a glass half full kind of guy, like, wow, yeah, impressive CIG, impressive. It's cool, and uh, I guess we'll see what the end result is because we know that was just a shard of pyro. It was like a piece, and it was kind of highly congested because everybody's interested in playing it so lots of numbers lots of activity and then yeah. a smaller sandbox right pyro's meant to be that's true too half the system's mm -hmm. shut off so it's forcing players interaction and stuff so yeah so we got in the mix and you'll see this pyro video that our intern joe is gonna do shout out to joe but uh we got into some organic pvp just at delivering uh like a cargo box so really cool mission to get that box and go deliver it as soon as we delivered it it was like players inbound uh and it was really cool to see all of us just seamlessly go and switch on from being casual funny to like we're finishing this mission let's fuck around crack jokes to like sw flip the switch uh and the way we moved and enveloped and uh converged on the threats i think man just makes me feel real good that was really good yeah, com team comms chub status Yep, just basic, basic. Well, except for you, dog. Specifically in that video. <laughs> Wait, say that again. <laughs> I, I said Trump status for me, but except oh, for you. Yeah, I just had you a were not hard. I was not hard. The hard cover <laughs> was just not abundant for me. <laughs> Keep an eye out on Sunday. There's a video coming out. Is that I, coming Sunday? I, well, let me put the date because I don't know when this one's going up. Uh, it'd oh, probably be short. out by the time we get this one up. That's a YouTube November twelfth. Sick, dude. Yeah, YouTube. And then Joe, uh, he'll probably finish one this weekend or next, so we'll have, I think, about maybe one to two gameplay videos a week and then a bunch of YouTube shorts. And then on top of that, stuff yep. in the nail coming in. So we have long form, medium form, and then short. Um, it's good times. we got good things happening. Bringing here. you content via an FS9. <laughs> also, Subnote Echoes uh, making an FS9 club. I think you should make that uh, yeah, a yeah, spectrum, yeah. dude. You know how, like, Gunner's got his arms dealing, and I got, like, the training cadre thing, and then you could just be like, the final FS9 club, pinkies up, bitches. You guys are fucking... <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. such a great idea. It's the finer, the finer FS9 club. Like, you, you're you in or you're not. Dude, we, yeah, you should spectrum that. Make it a make it a club status and see who's who's out there... Who, who's out there... Uh, <laughs> Bobbing and weaving with FS9s, dude. That would be really cool. Preaching the great word of the FS9. Yeah, Echo was on like a, a gift giver high the other day, just like, oh, you like FS9s? <laughs> and then he's like, what's your email? And he's sending them subscriber flare FS9s, just like, <laughs> just dollar bills out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was way fun. Well, it's good having you back, dude. It's good being back. Stuck in the nails at full tilt now. So stay We're tuned. Back. We're back. We're back like the dinosaur movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, dude. And we don't give a fuck. We don't. Sorry. Thanks for your comments, though, on the latest video. Go check it out. If you'd like to see how we do things organically in the verse, we put a lot of time into structuring our group to be effective in that exact scenario. Um, sorry for the salt. Thanks for letting me participate in the salt, though. It's always good to explain. And we'd love to interface with anybody at any time. Uh, Echo, any final remarks before we dip? Uh, I love all of you. I love all of you, too. But fuck you at the same time. But fuck you as well. And then also, happy birthday, yeah. Marine Corps. Happy birthday, brothers. Yeah. Those brothers. that are watching. It's November 10th. It's also my anniversary with Mallory. We got married last year. Oh. 
on the Marine Corps birthday. And uh, she well, knew. Well, cockwater go- to you two. <laughs> and she knew going into it that we would share, forever share this day as our anniversary. And so it's a, uh, it's both. It's, it's a happy day for both of everybody. And so we'll. Well, uh, shit. That just means I have to drink that much more on November tenth. I know. Mike gives everybody a little reason. So, but anyway, anyway, this has been another episode of Stuck in the Nail, the only podcast that talks about Star Citizen first-person shooter aspects and tactics and gameplay in that regard. So, we'll see you again, and if not, we'll see you. All right. On the we'll ground. see you on on the ground. We'll get that down sometime. Probably not. But that's it for us, boys. <laughs> We're out of here. We're gone. <gasps>